Whoa, what is this new Metallica material? Wait, 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 it's not new? It's from three years ago? How did I miss this? Let's check it out. Five minutes later. Did James just call himself a table? A few moments later. <laughs> this is hilarious. I love the Metallica made a joke song. <laughs> right? Hello, darkness, my old friend. Drink responsibly on this one. The Black Plague. The Second World War and its atrocities. The Mongolian Conquest. Lulu. Some Metallica fans speak as though all of these things belong in the same breath. I was not lying in that intro. When I first heard the single off of Lulu, I thought it was a joke. I thought this was a troll. When Lulu was released in 2011, it was the lowest performing Metallica album since their sophomore record, Ride the Lightning. Oh no! But this was Lou Reed's best performing record since Metal Machine Music. And I think that is a key to better understanding what the hell this album is and why it is hated by so many Metallica fans. But for the uninitiated, what is Lulu? Why? 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 Before we get into the video, this video is sponsored by Night School. What is Night School? Night School is my thing. It's my website where you can subscribe for $10 a month to get the Discord access or $5 a month if you just want the extra videos. It's a way for you to affordably take the next step in your music career and also support me and support the channel. If you want more Prolovsky videos, if you want more videos talking about music production, go purchase that shit. Get 15% off for subscribing annually. That's basically two months for free. And if you're dead ass serious about making music your career, order one-on-one -on -one instruction with me. Go to fucking night school and take your career seriously. All right, back to the video. Lulu was a collaboration album between Lou Reed and Metallica that was released in October of 2011. If you're familiar with both of the artists' work, it's really not a stretch to understand why this is such a polarizing record. Many critics panned it, some reviewers enjoyed it, and almost all Metallica fans hated it. But there is some good news. They still do. Lou Reed makes auteur minimalist rock and Metallica basically defined metal for two decades and is a music industry darling. This is the musical equivalent of trying to deep fry a frozen turkey. Why would they decide to do this in the first place? In 2009, Metallica performed with Lou Reed at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And like two artistic little dogs, they sniffed each other's assholes, they kind of liked the aroma, and they thought, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to take a shit together sometime. And that shit is what we know today as Lulu. Initially, the plan was to finish some old demos that Lou Reed had, but they settled on a number of demos that were centered around or inspired by this old fucking German play called Lulu. Or really, it's a duology, it's two plays, but if I, I'm gonna call it a play. It's one play. Metallica and Lou Reed made this album loosely around the concept of this play. The stool was a little loose. And it's not a complete surprise. I mean, Metallica have always liked spreading their wings creatively. Wild composition choices on Injustice For All that might even be considered prog by some people. The hard left turn after that on the Black Album to make something very commercially viable, which everybody loved. The s &M concert where Metallica got fused with an orchestra, or the Load and Reload era where it was even barely recognizable as metal, which everybody loved. While it is not outside Metallica's purview to do something completely different from anything they'd ever done before, they had never done something as extreme as the brutal minimalism of Lou Reed. And fans have tried to like analyze the psychology of how they decide to have the theming or style of each album. And there might be some merit to this, but I don't know, but follow along with me here. After the St. Anger release, which was very different from anything else they'd ever released, fans were really curious if they had run out of ideas, had they lost their way. So when they released the following album, Death Magnetic, a lot of fans felt like it was a return of old Metallica, the Metallica that we love, bro. Anything different fucking sucks, bro. But some thought that Death Magnetic was just ticking some boxes, it felt a little bit too safe. So naturally, Metallica's next album would be the mind-numbingly repetitive ravings of a sex pervert. It's just science. If you'll notice, I've spent this entire video so far framing Lulu around the band Metallica, and I think that's probably the greatest problem with the album. Fans saw this as the next Metallica album, when in reality, this was the next Lou Reed album. De facto, Lulu is a Lou Reed album featuring Metallica. Most people didn't realize at the time and still don't know, Lou Reed has first billing on this thing. He is the primary visionary on this album. That is indisputable. When you start to frame things that way, things start to make a lot more sense. 
especially that raving sex pervert part. But to be completely honest, it really didn't matter how they tried to market this album, because as long as Metallica was involved, they were going to overshadow Lou Reed. So now that I've helped you recontextualize things so that you think of Lulu as a Lou Reed album featuring Metallica, let's make like the Marquis de Sade and analyze it. I don't like journalists. Journalists? Oh, I despise them. Why? They're disgusting. With the exception of you. I think the worst part of this record was the marketing. Second worst part is the vision. Writing abstract, grotesque poetry about a turn of the century German play that only art snobs know about. Gee, what could possibly go wrong? I, like anyone else who has a life, had no idea what the original Lulu was, never heard of it. So in preparation for this video, before I listened to the album one more time, I did some rough research on the play. Some songs roughly match characters or situations in the play. For instance, frustration is probably when Dr. Schoen finds out that Lulu is cheating on him with Schwartz. Mistress Dread feels like it's from the perspective of Lulu talking about maybe the Countess Gushwitz, but for some reason she's a fucking dominatrix for literally no fucking reason. That's like the opposite of her personality in the play. The song Pumping Blood is pretty spot on to the murder of Lulu by Jack the Ripper in the play. And while the play opted to kill the main character in the finale, Lou Reed thought it was a good idea to do it in the third song. And I think this perfectly illustrates the massive flaw in the vision, or should I say, the view, eh? No, I should say lack thereof. The glaring issue is, if you've never heard of the original Lulu, you're going to be extremely confused. But if you have heard of the original Lulu, you're gonna be extremely confused. I think it would have been smarter to have the album inspired by Lulu and not tell anyone that that's the case and just allow people to take it on face value, you know, be able to hate it on its own merits. I was hoping to have a better understanding of the lyrics and themes by knowing more about this play it only helped marginally. Like much of Lou Reed's work, I feel like this would be better served just by trying to engage it on face value instead of looking too deeply into it. A perfect day comes to mind. Heroin and alcohol governed his life to the point that many people read Perfect Day as an analogy for his relationships with substance. Reed himself has denied that reading, claiming the song was a very straightforward affair. I'm not going to quote the lyrics on this video because many of them are disgusting, all of them uncomfortable. Some of it's cringe, some of it's grotesque. To Reed's credit, all of the lyrics, and I would say all of the music, feels very authentic and vulnerable. If there's one thing you can say about Lou Reed, he is authentic. And sometimes, vulnerable can come across as cringe, and that's not inherently a bad thing. The first lyrics, right from the top of the album, kind of act like a firewall for audience members, as if Lou Reed was trying to keep out people with good taste. Those lyrics immediately tell the listener, basically what this experience is gonna be like. And for someone who would hate the Lulu album, I imagine that would make them wanna turn off the song right away. So, I mean, thank you, Lou Reed. Thank you for not wasting my time by putting something so clunky and offensive right at the beginning of the album, you make me stop listening immediately. And by having me stop immediately, instead of investing 90 minutes of my life into an album I would purely despise, you're actually respecting my time. See, I kind of unironically think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and this album is also 90, 90 minutes, minutes long. long, but we will get to that. The song that I think hit the best for me, lyrically and musically, is Cheat On Me. It's a song that I think relied the least on shock value and was discussing something that I think is a common problem today. I think it's gonna be relatable to a lot of people. In my opinion, this is probably the most relatable song. The simple lyrics evoke the conflict and mystery of a serial cheater. And when I say mystery, the mystery that they have about themselves, how they don't really understand why they suck, basically. While the lyrics point to a more complicated interior, the lyrics themselves, I would say, are very on the nose. There's, there's no crazy analysis going on here. It's how you want to interpret the conflict. Sometimes that is the more powerful approach. The music in the song has a definable theme with some cool sound design. Instrumentally, this song is one of the highlights, which is kind of like saying, this was my favorite Nazi death march. And much like the Nazi death marches, why the fuck is this song so long? This brings me to my next big problem with this album. Every song on this album could have been cut in half, and it'd still be too long. I understand that sometimes you're vibing to a riff, bro, or you're vibing to a vamp, bro, and you're just kind of like sitting there for a while and enjoying that little circular stew. None of these ideas, lyrically or musically, 
were remotely interesting enough to warrant repeating this much. That and the lyrics are just baffling. Like you have to try way too hard to make something approaching coherent sense out of these fucking things. Obnoxious. We've spent this entire section talking about Lulu as it relates to Lou Reed. Now take everything that I just talked about and sit it in front of your average Metallica fan. Lars, for some reason, is still baffled as to why fans hate this album this much. And I mean, to a degree, it is inexcusable the level of some of the hate to the point where some fans threaten to shoot Lou Reed. But then Lars goes on to say that he believes after all this time, the fact that they hate it this much, it just really proves that the fans are ignorant. And while that seems offensive on the surface, I actually slightly agree with him. Most Metallica fans aren't going to know, or for that matter, give a shit about, some obscure auteur turn of the century German play. They're too busy buying 30 more copies of 72 seasons. But the real ignorance, I would say, probably comes from not knowing a whole lot about Lou Reed's work. He's done some pretty wacky out there shit, even by wacky out there shit standards. And your average Metallica fan is not really gonna be in the avant-garde unless they think that avant-garde is an early 2000s brand for camo pants. If your average Metallica fan better understood Lou Reed's work, I feel like they would probably hate the album less, but I feel like still very few people would actually like this. You made art that was intentionally offensive, and then you were surprised when people were offended by it. Did you eat paint chips for breakfast? And this is just the lyrics. We haven't even talked about the- Most of my childhood memories are not available to me. My childhood was so unpleasant that I re absolutely don't remember anything I think before uh, age 31. This music is fucking interminable. This shit repeats forever and goes fucking nowhere. Anthony Fantano reviewed this album, and one of the things that he mentioned was that during these repetitive, vibey songs that Lou would do, there was typically more climactic moments, and yeah, I agree with that. There should have been more of those. While the music does have some decent dynamics, it never really pays off at any point, which is a relatively static effect. I mean, think about it as edging the musical. People say the Lou Reed and Metallica combo was just a mismatch out the gate. And I gotta say, I actually disagree with that one. I think it's very possible to have this combination work quite well. I don't think they took enough time to have them gel together as best as possible. I was actually very surprised how seamlessly and naturally Metallica slipped into the more noise rock kind of sections of the song because there's very little of that on their original work. There is something fantastic about Metallica's chemistry on this tracking that I think really speaks highly to them as a unit. They were far outside their comfort zone on this record. Metallica are used to a more traditional AAA studio production, you know, getting more meticulous with parts, taking your time with a composition to see how it feels, how it gels, you know, like actually putting work into an album instead of trying to bottle the fart from your Chipotle lunch. And then the lyrical equivalent of just like slapping masking tape on there and writing in black Sharpie, smell my pain. Lou Reed had them on his his system of production. He had them all tracking everything live together, including Lou Reed live on the vocals each take. And while they were live tracking, they'd get through like three or four passes and Metallica would just be starting to feel comfortable and start to get some ideas for the composition. And Lou would go, that's a final. That's the song. Maybe no, it's not. But to get back to my original point, to be doing this loose, organic, repetitive thing live in a studio when you're not used to it, when someone else is calling the shots, and for them to still be so tight together, that's exceedingly remarkable to me, especially when they're not comfortable with the parts they're playing. That's just a strong testament to their chemistry. Lars said they had the bulk of the recording for that album done in under a week, and bro, wow. It definitely sounds like it. Lou was basically in charge of this entire production. He was basically the MD, deciding when they were finished, telling Metallica what they should do at each part. I thought Metallica didn't add stuff or that they didn't contribute, but Lou had the final say. In an interview on Howard Stern, Kirk Hammett recalls how Lou Reed kindly told him to go fuck himself multiple times. When we were in here jamming, you know, he had a he had his own kind of set of rules, right? And so when we were playing some song, I stepped on the wall pedal and he instantly ran up to the microphone and said, no. <laughs> Looked at him, he goes, no wall pedal. He said, no guitar solos. All right, so one song I, I thought, oh, we need a guitar solo. So I had to write Lou a letter. 
I had to send him <laughs> a letter. Wow. And I had to wait and wait and wait for his reply. He never replied. I saw him the next day at, at rehearsal, and he said, oh, I got your email, by the way. And that was it. That was no. the only reply back. <laughs> Lou Reed even challenged Lars Ulrich to a street fight. Gotta say, wasn't predicting that matchup on Celebrity Deathmatch. All this to drive the point again that Lulu is a Lou Reed record. He had the final say, and Metallica were basically featured guests. All right, time for me to say the inevitable. Lou Reed's vocals fucking suck. I can't for the life of me understand how anyone could enjoy listening to his voice at any point in his career. It is absolutely fucking beyond me. He is particularly not good on this record, those mangled vocal folds making him feel like an old man who is completely out of touch and whose ship has sailed long ago. And his voice feels completely out of place with a Metallica soundscape. Now, could they have made that work together? Kind of yes, if they did a few things. One, Lou Reed would have to be more extreme vocally. Lou Reed's vocal performance on this album sounds like a dirty grandpa complaining that his prostitute won't stomp on his nuts anymore. His vocal performance is not remotely extreme enough for a Metallica sound. It sounds like the world's cringiest karaoke. Second thing they would need to do is they would need much more compression on the lead vocals, or they would have to have Lou Reed sing way more consistently with his dynamics and his performance. Because Lou Reed likes things to be very raw and natural, I am almost positive he wants as little processing on his mix as possible. But it is blatantly clear that Lou Reed is not familiar with metal production or sound design. Without going into too much detail, you need to compress the vocals in order for them to sit naturally in the mix and still be able to understand the lyrics. So since they didn't compress it, they had to turn it up obnoxiously fucking loud, and that's why it sounds like his vocal is just blanketly sitting on top of all the instruments, which is awkward, and that's also why all the instruments sound so fucking dull. And on top of that, turning the vocals up way louder than the band just exaggerates how hilariously fucking awkward it is hearing Lou Reed sing over Metallica. Anthony Fantano also mentioned in his review that he thought the guitars were generic sounding or that they had compression on them. I am fairly certain there are no compressors on these guitars. The only compression happening is the distortion from James Hetfield's rig. And for the amount that I am familiar with Lou Reed's work, this approach does not surprise me. That sounds naturally the way a guitar would sound if you dialed it like James Hetfield. Frankly, trying to mix as little as possible could have worked out really well. I'm actually thinking about uh, Pain of Salvation's album, Road Salt One. Lou wanted something that sounded like the five of them just naturally playing in the room without anything filtering or getting in the way. And that's why James's tone sounds generic because it's not hyped or exaggerated or saturated. And if Lou wanted to stay with the raw thing and not put much compression on the vocals, James is gonna have to change his guitar tone. That's just all there is to it. James needed something with less gain, probably use a matchless cab, and something that has more natural dynamic to it, kind of breathes a bit more. And after that change happens, that means that the drum mix almost certainly is gonna have to change from this big, heavy rock-inspired thing to a more classic rock-inspired thing. And for the record, I think the instruments all mixed together without the vocals sounded really good together. I actually appreciated what they were going for, and I think they did a pretty darn good job. I actually would be intrigued to hear a standalone Metallica album taking something closer to this approach. Overall, while I didn't love all of the soundscapes, I think every one of the soundscapes was effective. I was impressed with some of the creativity of some of them. I have to say, Lou Reed definitely has an ear for interesting soundscapes. The biggest problem musically comes from the length and the arrangement of these songs. Holy crap. It's like being 15 minutes deep in a conversation with a stranger who still won't stop talking, and they've said nothing this entire time. The arrangements had little surprise or mystery. You knew exactly what to expect from your 11 minute experience one minute in. And pair that with the fact that most tracks on this album are seven to 11 minutes, one of them is 20 minutes, and I've decided to become a bleach tasting connoisseur. Boiling it all down, I think if Metallica had more time to get comfortable with the compositions and arrangements, they could have added way more perspective, put more input into these and made them just all in all more effective. My personal opinion. All right, so what's the takeaway? Are you happier as a brunette? Uh, are you happier as a schmuck? So to the title of the video, is Lulu actually a good album? I mean, that really depends upon how you define good. Is Lulu effective? 
I would say it's very effective in some ways and ineffective in other ways. Is Lulu a good Metallica record? No, it's a fucking garbage Metallica record. But is Lulu a good Lou Reed record? Well, David Bowie told Lou Reed's wife that he thought Lulu was Lou Reed's greatest work. I did not stutter. Based upon the limited knowledge that I have of Lou Reed's work, it's not completely out of line with any of the other crazy shit he's done in the past. It definitely fits cleaner into his catalog than it does into Metallica's. I don't know that I'm the best person to judge whether or not this is a good Lou Reed record, because I don't think a good Lou Reed record exists. That is to say, I find almost all of his work repulsive, and I don't think I am the audience to be judging this work. And frankly, I would say most Metallica fans are in that same boat. I can't deny he's excellent at eliciting the desired emotional effect, one that I think pairs excellently with his lyrics. I just fucking despise his songs and I can't stand listening to him sing. So what does Lulu bring to the table? Well, angsty lyrics about love and sexuality, raw underproduced sound from a band known for metal, odd vocalists that many fans consider to be extremely expressive, some callbacks to classic hard rock style writing and production. If I want all these elements, I can find that in Pain of Salvation's Road Salt 1. This album ticks all these boxes but it doesn't make me want to explore the space between a closed trash compactor. If you hate Lulu, or even if you love Lulu, I would love for you guys to check out this album, Road Salt 1. I think it's very underappreciated, very underknown, and I would love to know what you guys think of it and how the two albums compare. I think there's actually a lot of parallels between these two albums. Someone who appreciates Lou Reed's work would be much better at judging whether or not this is a good album because by Metallica audience expectations, this ain't it. I am so freaking exhausted after making this. I don't have an organic, interesting ending to this. So uh, click here to see how I remix Stand Justice For All. Many people complained about the bass being essentially inaudible on this album. I fixed that as well as a bunch of other glaring errors that other people didn't really realize were there. Go ahead, click it. Don't be shy, it's not gonna bite. You'll like it, I promise.